hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. <laughs> no problem. No problem, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mate. The bomber tattooed on his back is of course a reference to his potent punch power and not in any way insensitive to the tragedy which unfolded in this arena when Ariana Grande performed Manchester will never forget. Oh, all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here and still. Right, I'm going to get Smido from the Boxing Asylum on. Uh, let's have him on and let's have a Let's have a chat about some boxing, eh? What do you reckon? Have a bo proper boxing chat. Now we've got helmets and weapon there uh, out there. Let's uh, let's talk some boxing. So here we go. Uh, have a look. S Smido. Yes, um, here we go. Adam Smith, aka Smiddle. Uh, if you'd like to change your message after you've left it, please press hash. Is he not answering? Not looking good, is it? Did you just ring me? Did you just ring me then? Yeah, just rang you. Oh, right, yeah, on a withheld number. Was it? Oh, yeah. Good yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. I just don't answer withheld numbers because there's loads of trolls about, isn't there? Oh, um. <laughs> yeah, young, youngster must have been on and changed the setting. It should no have problem, mate. You're our old jungin. <laughs> uh, 21, 21 months, I think. <laughs> Messing with your phone at 21 oh. months. How are you anyway, lad? Are you all right? Not bad, yeah. Just been on a bike ride. Um, just got back. Um, bit, bit wet out there, but uh, yeah. decent. Enjoying it. 15 mile. 15 mile, lad, eh? Yeah. yeah. Not bad, that, is it? Yeah, I've been doing some... Uh, I've been going quite well. I've been doing about 70 mile a week. Yeah. So, yeah, not too bad at all. You been busy? Yeah, I've been plodding on. I've uh, been plodding on with channel and that moving forward. Trying to just change things and adjust a few things it's a bit hard with this uh virus because obviously i can go up to office and that but i, I prefer to uh be there when all other stuff gets done on videos but you know you can't i'm not there am i and yeah. it's quite hard to send big files in it and so we're just i do we're just i'm just winging it at the moment and what goes out there obviously it ain't got my bit of polish on it <laughs> Like, just little tweaks here and there, but we've got to make most of a bad job, haven't we, I suppose? Yeah. yeah it's not that's, good. That's fair enough, yeah. I've jotted a few things down. I thought we'd have a bit of a chat. What do you think about Felix Stern getting a uh, free year for tax evasion? Yeah, I've heard about that this morning. Um, I think it was... He always tried to do things himself, didn't he? Stern? Yeah. Um, I think it was like he tried to promote himself, manage himself. I think his father was involved. Um... Yeah, and he's he's either made a couple of massive mistakes or he's done it on purpose and he's tried to evade tax. I mean, what I would say is you don't often hear cases in Germany of people not paying or avoiding tax. Like, they're pretty shit hot on it, compared to particularly compared to over here. So he's either done something seriously wrong or he's made a, 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 a big mistake and uh, I'm not uh, close enough to it to make a, a, call, uh, a call on that, which, which side of the argument that will be. Well, like I said, he's uh, 
5.8 million euros in tax over seven years. Yeah, yeah, um, that would suggest that it looks like he's, you know, he's, he's going out his way to, um, yeah, he's going out his way to to avoid tax, and, and he's been caught. So fair enough. Yeah, do you remember when he fought Darren Barker? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, yeah, because I thought at that time that Sturm was over the hill um, and I backed Barker, and that was obviously um, absolutely terrible. Um, it's been it's been about a while already, Sturm, when I was dead, when, when I was. Was really into boxing. Um, obviously, fought Murray, uh, Macklin. Um, yeah, he's, he, and they had some good, um, good. Low, low I thought Macklin beat well, him. So. Yeah, I did. To, I did, to be honest. Um, I didn't think yeah. Murray did. I didn't think Murray did, but um, mm. I thought Macklin did. I can remember that was. I think that was like the night before I went on holiday somewhere. But yeah, I do re- I do remember that. Um, close fight, like oh, did, was Joe Gallagher not training Macklin at that? Yeah, point? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's had he's had more trainers than bloody Usain Bolt, um, Matthew Macklin. Jesus Christ. Mm. Um, but yeah, he used to get about it, didn't he? But no, he's a good um, good servant to the game. He's done. He's put on a, a good show and obviously got the German support. And um, yeah, like I say, did th- try to do things his own way. Yeah, uh, I thought that. Uh, when Macklin fought him, he got robbed. But I also thought when Barker fought him, Barker went out there and did the no road work. He had a hip held together by a glue, didn't he? And it went, didn't it, in first round? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. everybody said that it was uh, a, a disrespectful to fans knowing that he was in that kind of shape. Massively, massively. And then they tried to defend it afterwards in terms of, oh, it was his last payday. Um, I yeah. thought it was a disgrace. I thought it was an absolute disgrace. Um, I don't think you should be doing that. It was very similar to that... Um, uh, Nicky, uh, is it Nicky Cook who took on Ricky yeah, Nicky Cook, Liverpool, who, that, um, that's how Frank yeah. Warren, that was one at final nails in Frank's coffee with Sky, wasn't it that? Yeah, yeah. Nicky yeah, Cook against, uh, who was it? Ricky now? Burns, wasn't it? Ricky, Ricky Burns. Burns. Uh, he, yeah. They got him off a beach, didn't they, after 18 months? Yeah. Slipped him in at yeah. number 11 with uh, WBO and he, he got a voluntary, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that was, uh, that was no good. I mean, because... Yeah, but I, I remember the, the odds for that fight. It was like a coin toss between Barker and Sturm, and me and my mate thought that that was very wrong at the time, given um, Barker's you know improvements and before Sturm was over the hill. But obviously, like many of us, we didn't know that he was basically fighting, well, he was wobbling to the ring, basically. I mean, there's a difference, really. Like, when Ryan Burnett, for example, that's an injury that occurred during the fight. You know, there's not obviously that you can't do anything about that. But when people like um, Nicky Cook, um, Darren Barker, Sergio Martinez against Cotto, when they're going in the ring with an injury already in place, I think that that's bang out of order. But the pressures are on in terms of the promotion and the payday. And if they don't take that fight, will they get another chance? And you can see why they do it, but it does leave a bit of taste in the mouth, definitely. Yeah. Uh, moving on then, Frank Warren uh, is saying that he's worried that. With, with this epidemic and that, that boxing is going to lose a lot of young fighters. What do you think? Um, a bit of yes and no. So the the elites of the amateur game that are on the um, that are on the Team GB, I think that's going to carry on, isn't it? But the yeah, young fighters that basically aren't earning during this time. Um, and have got no date or prospect of earning in the near near future, next one, two, three months. Um, I mean, how many people can go four or five months without a payday? Certainly, I could not do that, no way. Um, And, you know, some of these, some of the ones that are starting out, at the very early stages of starting out, that haven't got the Team GB background, aren't earning any, they are not earning any more or less than, than people, average Joes like me. So if I can't go four or five months without a payday, you know, young boxer from Manchester or wherever, um, certainly can't. The ones that have already started breaking through a little bit and already signed up to the likes of Frank and Eddie, I think they'll be okay. But it's the ones on the periphery that are possibly hoping to get picked up by one of those TV guys in the next year or two Mm -hmm. um, that are operating with the Steve Goodwins and the Dennis Hobsons and the like. Mm -hmm. They're going to be feeling the pinch, definitely. Yeah, what do you think to uh, Awara Davis and Anthony Fowler's uh, intense beef? Well, it's another it's another manufactured bullshit. Um, I think Eddie's alluded to it this week, but Awara Davis was thrown under the bus 
that's not that's no secret. He was thrown under. Devin the bus. Haney wasn't thrown under the bus though, were he? Well, exactly, exactly, Porky. Um, Omar Davis was thrown under the bus. He is a live wire. He got found out massively in Scotland, um, but he's made his way back in it. And this golden contract tournament's been absolutely excellent for Omar yeah. Davis's career. Yeah, he was he's a, done well he on the MTK. Yeah. Yeah, and he's looked, he's looked, he looked quite, he's looked quite good. I think he scored a knockout or maybe two so far. He's in the final against that McKenna. I think that he shouldn't be there anyway, but that's a different story. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, and he says what he, he says what he wants so hard. He'll call out Eddie for chucking him under the bus. He'll call out Fowler for selling bloody cannabis oil or whatever it is. In terms of the fight happening, I can't see it. They're 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 quite far away in terms of weight categories, are they not? Um, they're talking yeah. about one fifty. Um, I'm saying at 150, I would quite fancy O'Hara Davis because Fowler is going to struggle to make that. Um, and O'Hara Davis can bite. He can definitely bite. Um, and Fowler's been down uh, once or twice and he's been he's gassed a couple of times as well. But Anthony Fowler's a twat and I'm not really interested in it. This is what I make of it. This is what I make of it, right? Anthony Fowler, basically, he's a middleweight, right? He's a middleweight, boiled down to 154, super welter. <laughs> Awara yeah. Davis is a light welter who could really do lightweight if he wanted to. So we have we have weight divisions for a reason, don't we, Smith? Our fighters are not superhuman, but because it suits Edward, he feels that, do you know what? Let's drop Fowler ten pound, because he was supposed to be going to middleweight, wasn't he? Let's drop yeah. him ten pound and let's put ten pound on Awara. That's dangerous, that mate, to me. Somebody's gonna somebody's gonna get hurt with all this soon, you know. Yeah, well what's happening is that um, that many outlets at the moment, because there's no sport on, are struggling for content. Boxing's no different, so they're just dreaming up stuff like goddamn John Fury against whatever his name is, that big bodybuilder, Kawasaki Frotch, which is just no chance, but it gets people talking. Yeah. And then O'Hara Davis and Anthony Fowler at a lower level than Frotch Kawasaki gets people talking. Fowler can talk rubbish. O'Hara Davis talks a lot of rubbish, and that's where we are. I mean, I'm, I'm more interested in in the in, in in the reality than the, than the circus. Yeah. Uh, speaking of cir- the circus, right, do you think that if we back up like eight year, Frotch Bootie, eh, yeah? You say, is it eight I was year? There, yeah. Eight year, I was there myself. Is it eight year next week? I think it is. Uh, isn't it? May 2012? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Well, non non pay per view, Saturday night, Bootie, eh, you were yeah. considered the man, money in the weight division, 30, you know. Yeah. He was supposed to be fighting Ward or Frotch, the winner at Super 6. So, Bute 30 and 0, 24 knockouts. Then you've got the Cobra in his hometown, right? Non pay per view Saturday night. Was that a great show? Yeah, of course it was. Good value on it for fans. What yeah. have we got now on a non pay per view on a Saturday night forward eight years later? What What is there? Well, nothing, man. Anything above. Um, anything above um, a British title fight is on pay per view now. Yeah. Um, you, you know the best thing. The best thing. Correct me if I'm wrong. The best show that we had last year on Sky 2019, Sky Saturday Night, um, to my knowledge, was um, the Newcastle show um, where they had um, G- uh, Cheeseman against Fitzgerald and um, uh, D- Davis against Ritson. That was the best uh, yeah. that was on offer on on Sky uh, regular subscription uh, in 2019. Good show. Um, but I, but I'm telling you now, I couldn't name another Saturday night show that occurred last year at all. I no, couldn't no, name no, one next the top gens. of my head. Apart from the next gens, um, well, and even I can't name the fighters that are on them. So um, it's quite obvious that we're getting to the stage now where um, it's going to be basically next gen MTK, which has been good. The MTK have been good for what they are, but it's going to be next gen MTK or pay per view. That's yeah. pretty much it. Um, I do um, struggle to compare eras in terms of oh well, Frotch only had two pay per views and and you know but no, Joshua he had three, had didn't seven. he? Three. So I struggle to compare those because times have changed since then, Porky. Yeah. Um, time, times have come a long way. I mean, Carl Frotch fought Jermaine Taylor and it wasn't even live on UK TV in a unification fight. You know, um, so I can't. I don't like to compare eras. Um, it's all part of the Anthony Joshua um, phenomenon, pretty much. Um, and, and yeah, I, I just, you know, pay-per-view is, and I've said this before on your channel, on the podcast, I keep saying it, um, pay-per-view generally has turned me off as a fan. I used to be 
well into boxing, much ten times more than I am now. But as a result of the pay per view, um, mainly and a couple of other bits, but I'm just I'm just refusing to pay it. Um, I'm not interested in the likes of Dillian White fighting on a pay per view three times or three or four times without even a world title on the line. Um, I just think it's completely beyond a joke. But I'm not going to make any difference if they can get away with it in terms of if idiots are people are idiot enough to buy it then they'll continue to do that. There's nothing I can do about it, so we just move on. The well, point I wanted to make is, uh, is it a, like what, what we've got at the moment is, I think that we've got these little spin, spun stories. It, oh, it's a great story and this and that. Everybody seems to be wanting to, in the boxing industry, as a boxer or their managers, they want to get these great stories out there or people... They want to be controversial on Twitter if the fighters are funny. or And then what about the fighters like, I don't like to bring Josh Whale up because I sign him and people are saying I'm biased, but let's just have a little look at Josh Whale. He, he had his first amateur fight in 1999, right? He's trained by his dad and he's still with his dad. Married with three kids, works with disadvantaged kids. Never had a pint in his life. Very clean cut kid, yeah? He's got more wins than any other featherweight in Britain. 33 wins, right? He's got more than Warrington. His record could quite easily be 39-5, and five, right? You know, because he's been a way fighter. And then we have... I don't like to bring this up, but I'm going to compare it. We've got Dave Allen. He's had, he's had nine trainers. You could call it ten, if you count Dennis, right? Ten Is he really? Wow, I didn't know that. No, I'll read your trainers out. Kevin Sanders, Michael Mars, and Steffi Ball... Twice, I think, so that could be 11, couldn't it? Peter Fury, Dennis Hobson, whether De I think Dennis might have just been a corner man, so I'll not count Dennis, I'm not sure on that. Adam Booth, Junior Witter, Dominic Kingle, Dan and Barker, Jamie Moore, that's nine, isn't it? Right. Hell. So is it David Allen or is it the trainer? Oh, it's got to be Dave Allen. Now, Dan and Barker said, I want you to retire, I don't want you to get hurt. But Dan and Barker also said, tell Frank Warren. You want another hundred grand on top of your two fifty to fight the bar, so then it, well, then when Frank said no, Barker bailed out on him, didn't he? But so if he's saying you need to retire, why is Jamie Moore picking up the mantle? Well, and I think that at times he's not like gone as far as saying I want you to retire, but even Eddie Hearn has said you know about keeping him safe or he's better off away from the ring for a time being. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we spoke about Dave Allen before. Uh, yeah, this, there is the, the the overall point is that you know, as you've got, as you pointed out, really that people just because they're funny on Twitter and they go to Nando's and they wear wear silly clothes at weigh-ins that they get more opportunities than people that put the hard yards in. But that's life. Sometimes, though, poor kid, unfortunately, it's not um, always mm. fair. Um, yeah. I think that happens in all different walks of life, not just boxing. Um, like I say it's not fair. Um, but it, 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 it can that's the that's the way it is, unfortunately. Um I don't care for Dave Allen whatsoever. Um I do. Really, really, I wanna I really see him fulfill yeah. his potential, but the worst thing in life is wasted talent, I think. And yeah. he was talented when he when he was with Dennis. Dennis says, What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna protect him. So what he wanted to do was protect him for twenty fights and yeah. get get him a, a padded record and let him off leash, but you know, after seven fights, you're undefeated, but he, he he didn't want to go to gym and that, and so then he's letting go. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's got a couple of problems now, Adam. Um, first one being his he, his undefeated record is long gone, so yeah. that's why he that's why he's happy to uh, or seems content to be able to jump ship and go and fight in France on non TV or go and go over and fight with Frank against Dubois. I know it didn't happen, um, but yeah, that's why he's happy to do that. And the second thing is the money. He's spending the money on gambling or whatnot or drink whatnot. Um, don't drink. He needs, he, yeah, he needs, he needs well gambling and he needs the money. So that's he's in a dangerous position. He's, he's going to end up doing doing harm to himself, to be honest. But like you say, Paul Key does appear at times to show flashes of, of talent. Um, mm. I think we saw it a bit against Lucas Brown um, mm -hmm. and I think Nick Webb also. But you just don't know if he's going to train or not. And that is not good enough for someone that thinks they, they should be fighting he headline on, on Sky Saturday night. It's not good enough at all. No. At all. No. And yes, people like Josh Whale must look at it and think, bloody hell, what have I got to do? Josh Whale's been been down a few, a few dead ends in his career, but, you know, he's undefeated in how many fights now, Porky? He's 4-0 with us. So, 
you know what I mean? He's doing, he's, he's, he's putting the work in, compa- particularly compared to idiots, basically, like, like, like Dave Allen. And, and, he, and a lot of his behaviour uh, recently has been idiotic, and that's the only way to describe it. Josh Wales, an area champion, English champion, British champion, Rob Foot European, and he's, he's got a belt now at IBO International, probably going to be fighting for uh, another belt uh, October 9th in Barnsley, but... He's put the time in. He don't get a look in. He don't do views on any channel when he goes on any channel because uh, he's just a nice kid. He's just a nice kid who, who's a gen. I'm not saying David's not a nice kid, but I, I think that uh, we're all losing his mind. We, it's a great story or the funny on Twitter and all that. Let's get whatever happened to working your way up the rankings and going through the levels. Yeah, that's long gone. What's long a gone. nine and zero? What's a nine and zero fighter like Dave Allen doing in there with Lewis Ortiz for for uh, twelve grand? That's yeah, before well, stoppages. To, yeah, yeah, wanted to pay that. Yeah, they're going, they're going through the levels as yeah does appear to, to be long gone. But the only the only difference is in boxing is that you can work you, that you can work your way through the rankings and force yourself regardless of whether you're on Sky or whether you've got hundred thousand followers on Twitter. If you wanted to, if you want to put the work in. You know, it should come to you. In, it should come to you in the end in terms of a title shot if you're good enough. Get in the rankings, and away you go. But obviously, that's easier said than done. Yeah. Right. Moving on then. Uh, you've obviously turned your YouTube on. You've got everybody who's involved with Sky. Obviously, they're not at work. A lot of a lot of these pundits a lot are not at shows, so they're not getting out there. Every time I turn internet on and go onto YouTube, I've got videos that with Nelson. Bean, Barker, <laughs> Caldwell, Bellew, Tyson Fury, everybody in the dog seems to be doing these fitness videos or getting themselves out there. They're eating off our plate now, Smido. Well, yeah, possibly, but you can't really blame them. Um, they're either getting paid to do so, in which case, then again, yeah. you can't blame them, or they, like you say, they just need to keep themselves relevant. Um, Again, it's not anything that I really go out my way to watch. Um, yeah, if they want to, if they want to do that, crack on. Um, it's part, it's part of the game now. It's part of the game, Porky. Keeping. Do you remember when everybody used to take Mickey out of uh, us lot a few years ago? When yeah. at boxing asylum, they, they used to hammer it, didn't they? Fighters and that. And now, have you seen what's happening now? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's, to be honest, right recently, the asylum have had some great guests on. Yeah. Uh, that Haney fella last week that's been signed by by Frank. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like we've had John Ryder on again the other week, and then a couple of days later he's on with Coogan. Um, yeah, I, like you say, they are kind of eating off our plate at the minute, but it does show that in some ways we're on a similar similar level to to the big to the big boys. Um, like say John Ryder, he's been he's been on the podcast many times. Um, yeah, so you just I gotta, like him. John Ryder is a nice back. kid, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and he got yeah, robbed against he's... Smith, didn't he? Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't go down that avenue personally, to be honest. But I can see the argument. But I, I remember I spoke to you quite soon after that. Mm. I don't go down that avenue of of, uh, of he was robbed. It was a close fight, and unfortunately he was on the wrong end of it. But robbery, not for me. No. no Smido, the voice of reason. The voice of the casual boxing fan, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, then moving on. Uh, I've got another one here for you. Yep. Uh, Frampton. What do you think next for Frampton? I don't know. Um, and I heard you ask that question to Steve, who's who's a lot closer to it than me for obvious reasons. Um, Frampton. Um, I thought that Frampton's X factor and appetite for the game left him the night that he was beat by Santa Cruz in the rematch um, he's carried on and he's had a couple of okay performances um, since then, fair enough earning a, earning a pan, no, no problem with that um, I thought he was sadly beaten by Josh Warrington in, in what would turned out to be a really good fight um, This that tall fella, what's his name who is meant to be fighting next from America um, does it begin with H? H- uh, Hooker Maurice Hooker, is he meant yeah, to be fighting? Yeah, oh, I got that. Yeah. oh no, that's the wrong way um, Whoever he's meant to be fighting that yank, the really tall lad, um, I can't see that being a good idea for him. Um, Herring, is it Jamel Herring? Herring. Yeah, sorry, Herring, yeah, not Walker. Yeah. Um, I can't see that being a good idea for him stylistically, but um, I think he's got a, I think he's got a belt, has he not? Herring, is, is he a belt holder? Yeah, I think um, so, yeah. WBO, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, 
the Warrington rematch, which I wouldn't have a, a big problem with, seems to have gone out the window because Warrington's across the road. Um, so yeah, I've it's always been a an entertaining fight for Hampton. I was really hot on him, you know, when he was beating the likes of Martinez and obviously Quig, Santa Cruz. Um, he was on a great roll. I think he was fighter of the year or, or second place fighter of the year at what in one of those years. But you know, as as happens with most boxers. Um, he's getting a little bit older, a little bit slower, you know, and he's just that he's moved up a, a, a weight as well, which which isn't um, which isn't ideal for for everyone, and you know he's just on the other side of the mountain at the moment. I'm not saying he's, he needs to retire or anything like that, but I just think his, his X factor has gone. But I, I'll watch his fights, no problem. Yeah, what do you think to uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Junior.'s uh, issue with Nevada State Athletic Commission, Smithell? Is this an extension of why you didn't fight um, a few Jacobs. weeks ago? It's meant to be fighting Jacobs, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know the details of it really. He's an absolute waster. Um, has been for, for for many a years, to be honest. He's spent way too much time outside the ring pissing about with um, marijuana or drinking or what whatever he's been doing. Um, I don't even know what must be going through his dad's mind, honestly. Um, mm. But... Um, I think what he's what what the junior what junior shows is that um, the you know the old nature versus nurture argument. Um, he's grown up in a vastly different environment and a vastly different world to what his dad grew up in, and look what look what the end result is in terms of yeah. you know his dad was his dad had grown up poor in Mexico while his son's grown up. Uh, a better, you know, a, a proxy millionaire in California, and, and look at the difference in attitude and and output in life. But I'm not, I'm not really interested in him to be honest. I've always found it very strange, actually, that the Chavez Junior um, interest in America because he's never really done it in the ring for me. But there's, a, but yeah, he's managed to get you know big fights and always big. He always was getting overpaid for years. He ended up fighting Canelo, which was a farce and. You know, I know Sergio Martinez, he got beat for 11 and a half rounds. Um, the, yeah, it's just not there. It gets another one where the talent versus the pay um, and the yeah, the talent versus the pay and the hype and the interest just doesn't weigh up, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, moving on then, White against Povetkin. They reckon that could uh, probably be the first one behind closed doors. What do you reckon? Yeah, they're on about it. Um, well, yeah, again, Dillian White, another, pay, another pay, headline of a pay-per-view whereby it, there's no world title on the line. I mean, they failed God knows how many drugs tests between them. Five, um, is it five or six? Something like that. I mean, what, Povetkin, how old is he now? 40-odd? 40 42, um, is he 40, 41? 41, is yeah, it? Yeah, he's been propping up Sky pay-per-view um, undercards for, for some time. Obviously, he's fought AJ Price, um, I think someone else in there somewhere. Um, Hunter? Yeah. Just no interest. Just no, just no interest at all. He was getting absolutely battered by Hunter. Um, I've just, there's just no. Honestly, Porker, if that fight was was on a Saturday night card and I didn't have to pay, I probably still won't watch it. I'll probably still go out that Saturday. I'm, that's how interested I am in that fight. I'm not interested at all. Dillian White. So just imagine that Dillian White is the the third the third biggest pay per view star in this country behind Fury and Joshua. Um, as we know, he's never even fought for a, for a European title fight, never mind a world title fight, turned down Joshua, life and death multiple times, but yet yeah, it's, it's pay-per-view headline. Now, there's absolutely no doubt that Dillian White is, has been and probably will be going forward involved in entertaining fights. Of that, there is no doubt. He had a couple of really... Um, I wouldn't say they weren't great fights, technically, but great scraps. Great scraps with Chisora... Um, it was shot to pieces anyway, but that's a different story. But he's been in entertaining fights, but that don't mean that I should have to pay twenty or watch him against a forty-two-year-old judge who's lost four, of, you know, four or five fights. I, 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 it's just it is the epitome of what is wrong with with boxing at the moment. That Dillian White against Povetkin is a pay-per-view, and the original plan was to have a pay-per-view in the same within about three weeks of another of another Joshua pay-per-view. I just it stinks. It absolutely stinks. And I've said this many times as well. Mm. I throw a better right hand than Dillian White. Yeah. Uh, where's Dillian White go? Because he's he's not back pool F. 
which would have led him to Joshua. He's actually not. Wilder, Otis back twice, and Joshua at Wembley for four belts. I mean, what is yeah. going on with his career? Where, where's he heading? Well, I just think it's a load of crap when you were, oh, well, we're, going, we're committed to the WBC, we're going down the WBC route, we've always been like that. Joshua but, said that, though, until he was mandatory for Wilder. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then absolutely. he jumped to IBF? Absolutely. So, yeah, um, I don't know, I just... It just seems to be Dilly White. This seems to be to me like some sort of infi- superiority complex. Like you know, does he does he think that he can you know he's up there with Joshua because he's on pay per view? I, I don't know. I just don't get it. Poor Ke- I mean, he's not that good, Dilly White. I mean, you know, we've seen him be knocked down by multiple people, life and death, blah blah blah. We've said it all before. Yeah, Chisora, um, life and death. I mean, I mean so we've got like Chisora. Um, Pot, he got knocked down by Parker and nearly out in the last round. Rivers, he had sticky times with. He had sticky times with Hellenius. He looked shit against Wack. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the, the list goes on. The list goes on, but yet he talks like he's the most avoided man in boxing. When he's been avoiding, he's been doing the avoiding himself. The can man. It's a joke. It's a joke. He's the can he's man, he says. Mm, well, what, a load of sh- what a load of crap, honestly. Honest, honest to God, the Chisora pivot. I mean, sorry, White pivot. I mean, I've moaned about White. You know, on, even on your time, I've moaned about White before. But this against Pivetkin's the. I mean, it's meaningless, Paulkett. In terms of, is it a final eliminator or anything like that? There's obviously no title on the line. It just feels meaningless to me. At least Oscar Rivers was some sort of final eliminator. Genuinely, it was, wasn't it? Because yeah. um, they wouldn't have bought Rivers in really for a pay per view. You know, no, no one, no, no one heard of him beforehand, yeah. including me. Um, but this Pavetkin just feels poor. I, don't, I just don't see what the point is. Other than we're, having, we're basically having takeover fights as main events on pay per view because it's not far off that. Yeah. I mean, Pavetkin is he's well skilled. Don't get me wrong, but he's well over the hill. Um, yeah, he's well over the hill. He was looking absolutely toilet against them um, Hunter before they got some sort of miracle draw on the scorecards. It's not far off a takeover fight, and it's and it's main event pay per view. Um, in terms of behind closed doors. It don't make any difference to me. I watch sport because I want to know what's going on on the pitch. I don't want to turn on sport to listen to him sing "Sweet Caroline" in the in the crowd. So it don't make no difference to me um, if it's be, if it's in a studio or if it's at Manchester Arena. Um, you know, if I'm if I want to watch it, I watch it. I don't care if there's any fans there or not. Mm. All right, uh, moving on then. Uh, the disappearing man has popped up again. Tony Bellew. Oh. He's on. He's now doing a, a, a podcast we earn. He's on SAS, Sky Soccer AM. He's a Sky pundit. He's been on Family Fortune. He, he's everywhere. He's now wants to fight Andy Ruiz. What do you think to that? Um, I, I think that's a nothing story. Again, you know, people are hungry for content, um, whether that's talking about Fury fighting Joshua again or whatever, uh, we mentioned a couple of them earlier, Fox Cows, I get, um, Tony Bell, you, um, oh, you've really hit me, uh, Porky, with the two people that Mr. I get Baker most, uh, Bell. A- yeah, the most animated about Bell, you and Dillian White, um, Bell, you was pretty much a fraud, um, he's basically robbed the British public of two, uh, he's retired, uh, basically he's retired a rich and happy man on the back of two, uh, daylight robberies, um, in terms of um, fighting David Day on pay per view twice, um, he's four, four a... pay per views. He's had in Bellevue yeah, four com- complete circus. Um, we found out how good Tony Bellevue was in his last fight, where he got absolutely peppered by um, by Usyk. Um, you know, fair play for him to take in that fight. I didn't think he would, um, and he did, and he got peppered. Um, yeah. He obviously made a comment somewhere at some time in regards to I just want to be left alone I'm going to retire quietly and he's done completely the opposite of that um, I think you said actually quite soon after he announced his retirement that he would be back um, you might be right can I see it? I, I don't know it's like my only problem with Bellew I think he had two two fights at every weight is that when he was in that period he was talking about you know I wouldn't fight Joshua I wouldn't fight, but I would fight Wilder. I wouldn't fight Fury because he's too big, but I'll fight Andy Ruiz. You can't be a, a heavyweight and be that clear cut in your picking, choosing, ducking, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, um, 
I think he's irrelevant. He's a little bit of a, he's, he's a bit of a personality value, to be honest, and that's why he's on shows like SAS or whatever. I've not watched it and Soccer AM. Um, I just think he'll be he'll be knocking around for ages, uh, and he'll be on podcasts and ringside and whatnot. But yeah, he's always got that comment to cut to that people will throw at him like me and you when he said he, he wanted to be left alone. <laughs> well. Looking through Bellew's record and Dillian White's, Dillian White's won a British, but that were vacant, and he's won a WBC Silver vacant, a WBO International uh, vacant, and uh, what they call it, Bellew's won a British Commonwealth European and a WBC all vacant. So they they've got all vacant belt. Do you know how many world title wins they've got between them both? White and Bellew. Yeah. Uh, Bellew two. 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 Yeah. Alundo Macabo and B J Flores. Which was a shocker. Which was shocking, and White's not even been in for a European title yet. But yeah, the White is he on his fifth pay per view next? White Bellew's on his yeah. fifth next if he comes back. Like I said, Carl Froch had three pay per views. Is this a case of, well, they do numbers on IFL, they're out there, they oh, yeah. get themselves out there? Yeah, the short answer, unfortunately for, for us, is yes, that is that is the case, yeah. Yeah, and it, do you think that's what's wrong with boxing at the moment, Smido? Yeah, massively, massively, massively. I would say that, um, for example, and obviously there's a bias towards the heavyweights, and there always has been, yeah. particularly heavyweight yourself. But I would say, for example, that Josh Warrington's got more, um, more, more talent, and and has put the performances in than, than most people in British boxing at the moment. Yeah, um, he's got a great record, hasn't he, Josh Warrington? He, oh, he's over, he's massively overachieved from what from what when he first came onto Sky, but in his first. The, the second phase of his career, if you like, when and um, yeah, when he was first with Sky, um, you know, we thought, oh, he's going to get beat in his next fight. He's decent. He sells a ticket, it, you know, um, but he's going to get beat at European level, and he, and he surpasses that, and then he's going to get beat at world level, and he surpasses that, and then he's unified, and he, oh, surely he's going to get beat. So, Josh Warrington for me, you know, nice kid, he's put the work in, has overachieved, but you know, gets ten times less coverage than. Um, Tony Bellew and half as much coverage as, as goddamn Dave Allen but mm. it, what can we do about it yeah uh, okay then moving on uh, Poole left says he's not taking step aside and Wilder says he's not taking step aside so what do you think to that well set my opinion that hasn't changed um, since um the turn of the year, really, or definitely since when Fury um, beat Wilder. Um, Fury won't fight Joshua um, any time this year at all. Um, I thought that Joshua would have two fights this year and, you know, clean up the, the mandatories, as it were, let uh, Fury have, an, have a third fight with Wilder. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised or disappointed where we are. I mean, with this, de with this delay through the virus, it looks like Joshua's going to have one fight this year. I can't really argue too much with that. Um, the fights are, are set in place. Both, I mean, it's not even anything to debate, really. Uh, Joshua signed to fight uh, Pulev, and Fury and Wilder have got it uh, contracted in as a rematch, a third. So, I mean, what is there to argue about or debate? Yeah. Fury Joshua. We know Fury Joshua is a, a massive, massive fight, but it ain't happening this year. So, no. I mean, yeah, just. We know what's going to happen next. Let it happen, and then maybe next year. Yeah. What do you think to uh, Joshua's current situation? If he beats Paul after talking about dealing with the mandatories and Hellenius, do you think that would be an overkill of maybe a couple of fights too too far? Confusing um, fans, I think. Yeah, he's he's po he's possibly approaching that stage, Porky. Yeah. Um, a bit like Chris Eubank Senior back in day. Say that again, sorry. A bit like Chris Eubank Senior when he was with Barry Hearn back in the day where they didn't want to fight anybody. And when you look back at Eubank Senior's record, the only five defeats that he had on it were all against on Frank Warren's shows, weren't they? Well, um, yeah, I think that they could, uh, create their own monster, to be honest, because... Um, they're constantly talking about Wilder and, and, and Fury, 
at different stages throughout the last three or four years, and I'm guessing that will continue for at least another year. Um, so they've created this situation where those three are, are clearly the top three and have been for some time and probably will continue to do so, depending on what Wilder does. Um, and the heavyweight division's booming, blah, 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 blah. But, um, yeah, they can't get away with it for too long without getting in with Fury and Wilder. It is the, the glamour division. Joshua is... Until until Fury beat Wilder like he did the other week, um, Joshua was by far and away the biggest star in British boxing. I've said many times that I think that in this country you can just class boxing and you can split into two, Anthony Joshua and everything else. It is changing a little bit as Fury is, is now on a par with Joshua, not only in the ring, but out of the ring as well. Fury in the last six months to a year, yeah. as the, the PR turnaround he's had has been absolutely it's been astonishing, really. I, I know I texted you about that the other day. Um, so, yeah, it's them two and then everyone else. But, like I say, going back to the question, if you keep saying, oh, we need to find out who number one is, Joshua Wilder Fury, Joshua Wilder Fury, blah, 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 and then not doing it, then you're going to have problems. Um, you're going to have to start going back to earlier Joshua pay-per-views. If it is to be Hellenius next, for example, you're going to have to start padding the card out a lot better than they have been previously. Charlie Edwards and Katie Taylor that we've got recently on Joshua Undercards is not good enough if the main event is Joshua against Hellenius, for yeah. example. Well, would we want to see Joshua against Hellenius? No, no. no not Do really. we want to see um, Joshua against Pula? No, not really. Um, now, I, I've got a solution to that, mate. I've got a solution to that. Uh, yeah. I've got a solution. Joshua has got four belts, right? Why don't he just bin all his belts? Because Tyson's already got them belts anyway. And just fight Tyson for WBC, the one that he's not got. And then they get rid of all them sanction fees, right? They scatter the belts and they just them two just fight because let's have it right. It don't, it's not about belts, Joshua against Fury, is it? Well, I would agree with that if there was if they owned one each. But because it would be a hundred percent, everything would be on the line. Even if you count the IBO, even if you count the ring, everything would be on the line. There is definitely some kudos to that and some historical relevance to that. It's never, it's not been done for years, if if ever. Um, so. Yeah, I can see that side of it, but even if you've been off the belts, Paul, you've still got a problem in terms of Tyson's on BT, Fury's on Sky, or whatever, uh, Joshua's on Sky, or HBO versus DAZN, or whatever it is, you've still got that problem if they've got no belts. Yeah. That's a bigger problem to get over than the belts. Um, yeah, yeah, I just, it's, it's, I mean, you know, there's way too many belts anyway, we know that, um, but it would be... It would be spectacular to see everything on the line and yeah, be, would, yeah. between two British boxers, particularly two heavyweights. I mean, there's not many fighters in the game, in, well, in the last decade that have done that, never mind a Brit. I think Terence Crawford, possibly Andre Ward, but other than that, I mean, you know, who's who's held, who's truly unified a division? Not, not Alan enough, Minter. Well, they were going a long way back there, mate. 40 year. Yeah. 40 years ago, he unified it, didn't he, against Vito and Fermo? He had both belts at Ring Magazine belt, I think, didn't he? Yeah, but, but there was two belts then. Now we've got four, five. Four or five, yeah. You could say five, couldn't you now? Yeah, so... It's, uh, yeah. it's, it, it's exciting times ahead, isn't it? This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just... Bean! <laughs> you love yeah, it when I, mean... I do a bean, don't you? Oh, I particularly do like you being, yeah. Um, Chris, Chris Eubank well, Jr., what next? Well, I think he's training with Mayweather's, is he not, over there, is he? Roy um, Jones. Roy Jones, that was it, sorry. Um, God knows, God knows. Um, it should be a middleweight. Um, he, his inactivity makes him difficult to, 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 to kind of follow and get behind. I've got mixed feelings about Eubank because he shows flashes of it in the ring. And if he can... Because he's not, he's not that old, you like that, and he's not got that many miles on the clock. He can still, it can still be relevant, but because he's inactive and he isn't assigned to any particular promoter, so we're not seeing Chris Eubank on Soccer AM or 
you know, whatever whatever it may be. We're not seeing him on Sky Sports News um, or BT, you know, similar things with BT. We're not seeing that. He's kind of out of sight. Out of, out, of, out of mind even for me um, I couldn't even tell you his last opponent Chris Eubank couldn't tell you um, he's, I don't know he stepped up a couple of times and been beat and he um, the the raw material is there but he just needs to I've always thought he needs to be off his dad from, from the training element because it comes across to me Eubank as someone that basically trains himself and I don't think that's good enough um, I don't think that's good enough for anyone so if he is genuinely going out there and genuinely training with Roy Jones and he's and the old man's not, not in the way, then fair enough. There's you know, there's always big fights for him, just with simply with that name, there's always big fights for him in Britain. Um but yeah, it's it's a, obviously a pain in the backside to deal with. I mean Frank's had him tried to sign him up four or five times with a Saunders rematch. Golovkin was there on a plate and it ended up with Kel Brook getting his eye socket beating instead of Eubank. Yeah, it's one of them. It could be, it could be exciting and relevant, but currently he's not. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I think he could have fought Golovkin, couldn't he? And if he'd have got a loss, then we would have not. We would have not classed it as a proper loss, wouldn't we? We would have said it's Golovkin, wouldn't we? You know, he would. He was yeah, supposed yeah. to lose. So Chris Eubank might have had might have had similar success. The result might have been the same, but you could have but Eubank could have took that opportunity and come out of a, of a, a, a could have lost, performed well, lost like Kelbrook did, and come out of, as a as a better fighter and a bigger name, and you know it could have gone on from there. But it just is there are souls to deal with, aren't they? Simple as that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, what did you make of that Kelbrook Golovkin fight? Do you think that ruined him? Yes, yes I do. Um, obviously, um, you know, it's easy to say in hindsight he shouldn't have taken, taken the fight, but the opportunity presented himself and, you know, I, I don't like saying cheesy things like this, but he did to be great. Golovkin was on a roll at the time, but I think he'd got like 20 opponents out in a row or something ridiculous. It was before he fought Canelo. And I think it's one of the few fights that I, that I class as a go-to fight. When, I don't watch all that much boxing anymore, but I would go back and watch that fight. Now, to be honest with you, I, I thought it was a, a really good fight, and I thought Brooke, you know, boxed quite pretty well, and I do think he rocked um, Golovkin at, at times. Um, yeah, it was, it was really warming up to be a good fight, but then basically he got his face smashed in, and that's the... That's the risk you take in boxing. He got soundly beat and he deserved to lose. But it was a, it was a good fight and, like I say, one that I would one that I would watch back regularly. Um, and that could have been, you know, that, that could have been Eubank in, in there giving it a go. But he he bottled it basically. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see where you're coming from. Yeah. I think we'll see Kel Brook in the ring again. Me talking. No. 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 I don't. I, I don't see. as well. To be honest, I just think that. I can't see. I don't think his art's in it. He's got a few quid, and I don't yep. think his uh, his art's in it. Well, because he's saying he's saying he wants these big fights, but frankly, he doesn't deserve them on yeah. recent form. Yeah. He doesn't deserve a shot at you know whether it be Crawford or at the, or the upper weights heard or whoever it may be he doesn't deserve those fights with them Americans because his recent his recent form has not was well, certainly not the final eliminators and stuff like that and he's not that big of a name in America at all um, mainly due to his inactivity so you know he's saying he wants them fights he don't deserve them fights he's unlikely to get them fights and as a result he can't get up you know at five in the morning to fight you know, a Salido from Argentina or whatever they dig out of, you know, number 10 in the IVF rankings. So, I don't think we'll see him again, to be honest. Yeah, I don't. Uh, PEDs in boxing, Smido, is it rife? And what's the answer as regards the Liam Cameron getting four years for cocaine and other people having three charges and just getting two years? What, what's the answer? Yeah. I'm glad you brought this up because it's something that I've um, thought about recently um, discussed on the asylum so a couple of things on the Cameron case um, it appears on the face of it to be unfair definitely um, even if even if and, I've, and I don't know and I, I wouldn't 
ask or want you to, to comment. But even if someone, say his name's Cameron, has taken cocaine on a night out knowingly, does that deserve a four-year ban? Probably not. Now, I know in the Cameron case that it's along the lines of a trace amount and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I agree with the majority in regards to UCAD and Cameron, et cetera, whereby um, if you're one of the little guys that have not got the money to take them to court, et cetera, et cetera, then they're going to come down on you while the likes of Dillian White because he's backed or because he's got a few quid and Tyson Fury the same, just get away with it because they threatened to sue. Um, 100% agree with Wellins, who said the other day on Porky's Corner, you can are not fit for purpose. Um, yeah, I agree with Steve on that. 100%. 100%. The, um, the Tyson Fury case is an absolute sham. From top to bottom, it mm-hmm. is a sham. Um, it's, it's disgusting, really. Um, we could go on about that all day. Um, and yes, I do think it's right. I do think it's right. We had uh, Larry Olabami who the other week was, you know, brought it back up to the to the forefront of the thinking. Um, and uh, to complete my answer, we was talking about Roy Jones um, on the asylum the other day, and um, because Roy Jones was prime, was certainly before I, I came. I was a hardcore boxing fan. Um, I kind of. Um, took I, my opinions of Roy Jones that are all retrospective anyway because it was before my time were tainted by the fact that he was you know basically a proven drugs cheat um, and I kind of uh, underrate his qualities and record because he was because he got caught on the drugs um, I think I need to revise that way of thinking because um, th- I need to revise that be- and think that everyone's at it so I just need to look what goes in on look what goes on in the ring rather than starting to think oh well he was he was on drugs because he might have been on drugs but he got caught and there's plenty of others that are not getting caught. My opinion of Canelo is tainted, um, and uh, I mean it's I think it's rightly uh, at the time I used to think oh well they've they've been on drugs so I fuck them, but now you know I need to just need to think that they're all at it anyway. Uh, forget about the drugs and just. Um, and, and you know, just uh, just make my opinions of what I see in the ring. Um, I've said something controversial on the asylum before, um, whereby I think that there'll be an example that we do not know about and we might never know about, whereby um, a fighter has been injured or worse um, by an opponent that was that was on drugs, and we'll probably never know. I think that's probably already happened. Um, I think it'll, um, it's only a matter of time before it happens again. Unfortunately, I, th- I think it's horrendous. Um, we've heard people say similar things before, but you're putting people's lives at risk, literally. It's, I, know, I know Hearn says this, and I don't always like to you know, follow him, but you know, it's not cycling. It's not cycling or weightlifting where you not where you know you don't even, you don't this, you, you are punching people. Like the idea is to knock people out, and to, I think it's criminal. I think people should be criminally charged, but we've got the is the same old story with boxing. There is no blanket policy or blanket governing body. It's a mess, you know, UCAD, USADA, US, whatever it may be, Nevada and Texas, and it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. No one is in charge or taking the bulls by the horn. And then the final part to the question is that the whenever someone gets popped, who in the world ever in sport, particularly boxing, has said, yeah, yeah, I was injecting the human growth hormone. I mean, Jarrell Miller kind of did that, but other than that, who's going to admit it? We've all get bullshit stories about, you know, um, chase amounts or questionable this or we defended this or my brother spiked me drink or what, whatever it may be. It's a mess. It's a complete mess. Um, I don't read up on it all that much. I try not to pay attention to it because it's all, it's all smoke and mirrors the whole lot. Uh, one person who does know the ins and outs of most cases is Andy Patterson on the asylum. He's, he reads all the cases and, and stuff like that, and I just get the, the headlines off him. But it's a complete mess, um, and someone will end up dying as a result of it, and it's horrendous. What do you think to Dave Allen uh, recently having a moan about the drug cheats that he's fought and lost to? Now, he's been in with Yoka, Gillian White, Louis Ortiz. And he was trying to get a fight with Povetkin. One of you signed for the Povetkin fight, but Price beat him. So 
David Allen's having a moan about the... Uh, the oh, it's quite the, simple then, isn't it? Don't, don't fight him. So Luis Ortiz... La, yeah, drugs test he fought Larry Alabama out as well, didn't he? Who were, who were yeah. a drug cheat. And, and wasn't there were another guy he fought early in his career as well? I, I'm Not trying nice, to... Lewis Ortiz had already failed a drugs test once or possibly twice before he got in the ring with Dave Allen, so it's quite simple, don't fight him. Yeah, it's, like, uh, it's, the same with, it's the same with Hearn. Hearn said to start with, you know, maybe four or five years ago, um, I don't want to work with drugs cheats, but now they're appearing on every show he does. And that's not his fault, because there's, if you take the drug, if you take all the people that have got question marks over them for drugs or, or have failed drugs cheats, there'd hardly be anyone left for him to work with. You know, Dillian White... Yeah. Um, Canelo, you know, there's loads. I don't think that's about. right for Dave, though, because there were no testing mother when he fought, you know, in them. But fight. again, that's his fault, Paul Gio. That's his manager's fault for not having, yeah. for not insisting on the testing. Yeah. I mean, at, at lower levels, I think it's more rife as well because there is no testing on on a lot of these smaller hall shows or <laughs> even the undercards of of Matchroom and, and Warren shows because it costs twenty grand or whatever a time, you know. So there's no wonder people are doing it. Go on, two seconds. Go on, Rocky, out. Go on, scoot. Scoot. Go on, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm filming. <laughs> my dog just walked by uh bedroom window, so Rocky gets up on my bed and acts ten men, but if that dog oh, come near my house, he'd get under the bed. But, yeah, I see where you're coming from with this, this PED thing. What I want to move on to is... Uh, I know, obviously, you saw my uh, video that I put out about Dominic Ingle, right? He's had three fighters that have failed. Now, if he has another t failure, another drug failure from his gym, somebody that yeah. he trains, is he open to punishment? Well, the short answer to that, I believe, is no. But should he be open to punishment? Probably yes. Like Billy Joe Saunders, for example, even I've just forgot that there, Billy Joe Saunders failed a drugs test and didn't fight Demetrius Andrade, but no one talks about that. No. Like he failed a drugs test. Simple as that. He failed a drugs test. Kid Galahad's failed a drugs test. Tyson Fury's failed a drugs test. But we, 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 team, we seem to just like skirt around it and forget. Because we, we get um, silenced through bullshit. Yeah. It, it's some, some nasal stuff or Fury says he's not guilty, he's done a deal with you. Can, we get, they, just wash, they just wash the media and the, the boxing model community with bullshit. And we, you know, we kind of are told and or learn to forget um yeah there's a, i don't know i mean i don't want to start with very tingle but yeah they it's more than a coincidence let's put it that way Porky. um but what again again if there's no rules to you know there's no rules in, i mean kid galahad failed a drugs test served the band come back fought for a world title like there's no there's, there has to be consequences to to, to your actions there's, there has to be consequences you know tyson fury is Fail two drugs tests depending on, on which part of the report you're in. There's, no there's no consequence. There's no consequence. There has to be consequences charges, to. to you know, there's got to be. Con I mean, if it was me, and I, I've said, you know, this kind of goes against everything I've just said, but I wouldn't do any drugs testing because they're all ahead of the curve anyway. Lance Armstrong was ahead of the curve for seven years, you know, or there'll be people ahead of the curve now in terms of taking stuff that can't be detected. Just let them get on with it. Just let, just let them all cheat. Let them all cheat. I mean, I've been watching some old UFC fights, Porky, from, you know, when it first started. Jesus Christ. Some of the stuff that them lads were on. I mean, they're going in the ring like, like absolutely, they look like something out of movies and they're fighting each other. Mm. Um, you know, yeah, it's just, it's a mess. It is a mess. Do you think that uh, they'll get to grips with it? No. Do you no, think that it'll take a death in the ring from somebody that's had drugs? Uh, yes, but I think that might have already happened. Yeah. Either a death or a and serious injury might up. have already happened at the hands of someone that was taking drugs. And they might not have been tested, they might not have tested positive, and only them and, and their trainer or whatever will know. But I think that's probably already happened. And that's the sad thing about it. The point I want to make is, and I don't want to just hang Dominic Ingle out here, but three fighters, three drug test failures, his fighters, and he runs that gym up there. He says who, when, how much, right? Yeah. He runs the show up there completely. I'm not going to go into detail, but I know, right? So why is the trainer not getting into trouble? Why is somebody not saying, Dominic, what's going on up here? Because 
if we have another test, does that mean that other fighters, and I'm hearing stuff like other fighters and other managers and trainers are saying, listen, we want drug testing before any of that lot up there get in with our kids. Now, yeah. there's kids in the in his gym at the moment who, who are flying, but are they on anything? Are they on something and they don't know they're on it? Yeah. We don't know, do we? What What is going on up there? Well, yeah, I've, I've not got a clue, but I think what they will do is possibly hide behind the fact that they'll say, oh, well, they've got their own nutritionist or they have their own strength and conditioning and I'll do the boxing or, so, you know, some bullshit like that. Um, but, yeah, again, um, the, I think there should be consequences or questions asked, but will they be? Probably not. If anybody has a loss against an Ingle fighter from now on, is there an asterisk next to that loss? Uh, I wouldn't take it that far yet. Um, I certainly wouldn't wouldn't think that at the moment. But like you say, if people, if opponents and the teams of opponents are already insisting for drugs testing to be in place, but particularly against that gym, then the spotlight's already on. So it might kind of solve itself in that way. Well, this is how I look at it, right? If they if they have one more drug test failure up there, what are the British Boxing Board have got control going to do? This old boys club that's run by 70-odd-year-old men with their noses in the trough. What are they going to do? Well, probably, like I say, probably not a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. They should do, but probably, probably not a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I suppose. But uh, on, a, on a positive note, September 11th, Tommy Frank, Flores, Pons Ford, Sheffield, IBO World title. Set, uh, October the 9th, Barnsley Metrodome, Josh Whale. He'll be in a title fight all being well. So that's well, what we're I'm hearing just from. can go ahead. Yeah, that's so, uh, subject, subject to yeah. government approval or uh, yeah. whatever virus thing. So that's what we've had in post. Email. Yeah, good. Well, I'm hoping they go ahead. So it's, so it's, it's, look, there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, but we're not out of the water just yet, are we? No, no, I don't think we are. Um... Uh, yeah, I think there's going to be some announcement next week in terms of um, ending the lockdown, but it certainly won't be overnight. Um, I think it could be months, and you know I'm directly affected by it, as are you, in terms of you know sport. Horse racing needs to be on for me to earn money. Uh, simple as that. And at the moment, it is not on um, and hasn't been since March the 17th. So yeah, it's uh, testing times. Fingers crossed, and you know I'm running out of jobs to do around the house, Porky. I think I painted nearly every wall in this house since March. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, right, running right. out of jobs. Well, listen. Thanks for coming on, Smith. Oh, you've been no an worries. entertaining. You've been an entertaining. Uh, uh, what do they call it? Contributor or pundit? <laughs> Good. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Uh, so, to, oh, uh, what does Steve Wellings call support. it? The panel. <laughs> yeah, the panel. Um, yeah. Uh, shout out to Innovation Alloys. Uh, yeah. Shout, shout out, out to Innovation Alloys. Uh, Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Keep on trucking. Keep on trucking. Self Yorkshire Package in UK Limited as well. You forgot them. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> right then. You take care. Let's hope that uh, any any at rest at Asylum, lads, or Dale Nichols, Matt down in London, Terry, or any of them, they can, they can come on any time they want. Yeah. Anybody could come on the channel as long as they're genuine. They send me their number through email. They're yeah. welcome on if you're a boxing fan. But I yeah. think there's that many people who... Leave messages. None of them seem to want to come on channel. Why is that, Smith? Oh, <laughs> well, I think I, some some of them have got the bottle. You know, like Ozzy Smith, he's not got the bottle, Porky. I just, no. you know, now you've got, you know, the Porky's corners took off really, and you know they don't need Ozzy Smith anymore on Porky's corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, mate. You you take care. Thanks for coming on Balls yeah. Deep, episode no two. Problem. Adam Smido Smith. Smith, you take care. Cheers, Porky. See bye you, bye. Uh, that was Smido from the Boxing Asylum. Uh, he was a nice kid. I've actually been to his house when he lived in. He lived near Frank Smith. No relation. Out is it out that way? Wigan area or something? I think he might have moved now. I forget now. It's uh, Lancashire hot pot area, isn't it? <laughs> I think he's actually a Nottingham lad, but he's a nice kid. He's all right. He always sticks it to me, but there's no malice from him. He's welcome on here anytime. And I wish him all the best. Well, that's it for today. That's all we're going to do today. 
we're going to get this out we're going to get this sent off now stick a few spinning uh, box and asylum logos in to, to get the to get a bit of uh bit of pr out for them lads because they've been doing it nearly eight years i think them lads and they, they do it for free to give up the time on a sunday night and it's one of my favorite programs so all right so peace out keep on trucking keep supporting boxing shout out to uh, terry and rico in london be getting you on shortly all right peace out oink oink <laughs> you like that one didn't you right first of all i just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing it means a lot to me because uh, we're on this journey together aren't we so anybody got any ideas for the channel fire them over to me porkycorner at mail.com all right shout out to innovation alloys and south yorkshire packaging all right don't forget to subscribe keep on trucking <laughs>